Hello, hello, and welcome to the, the the classic vague video that is I spent money on books. I haven't read the books yet, so I'm going to explain the books I've read that I inevitably won't read over the next few months. It's a classic. We all love it. Grace and I went to Kelowna. I may add footage here of our time uh, slash pictures. And while we were there, naturally, we love bookstores little known fact about this and i mean grace had an awareness of some of the stores inside of Kelowna because of books with uh, books and la la and so yeah there it was a very nice experience being there it was it was a lovely break a lovely holiday and we got books i think i was doing a very good job I'm sure everyone else and Grace would disagree. I thought I was doing a good job at not buying too many books. Uh, and I know that is a lie because I'm looking at, uh, like, we went to a second-hand bookstore previously and I found a bunch of classics that I wanted to read, like, four or five. So I am realising that I'm a liar. But that was to justify the fact that I'm looking at about 14 books here, I think, off the top of my head. So in the in the in the little bit at the bottom, timestamps, etc. I'm gonna split them into like sections. You'll see there what they are, but like fantasy, classics, memoir, poetry. If you do enjoy, please do like, please do subscribe. Uh, the cat is walking towards me. Is she gonna jump up? Yes, she is. So this was the first thing we got. Um, we missed the cats most definitely. Beginning with fantasy, because I assume that's why all you dirty little heathens are in here. Classic fantasy nerd behaviour, and they're right, Maisie. Uh, I got two fantasy books because we went into this fantastic second-hand bookstore called Ted's Paperbacks, and it was crammed with uh, with fantasy sci-fi it was kind of crazy and they had some really cool stuff like um, there was like a, a Silmarillion hard back there and all kinds of things that were, were really jumping out at me um, to the point where I didn't get everything I wanted such as like they had the, the, the two parts of um, to the green tower or whatever it's called the the last part of the Tad Williams memory soul and thorn uh, series but because we have the first two books and haven't started them yet, we decided not to get them. But, like, there was just a lot going on. It was overwhelming. But the ones I did get while I was there was I got The Warded Man by Peter V. Brett, which, um, genuinely, I have no idea what this is about. I've been trying to do a much better job of... If someone in the comments recommends a book... I have a quick look just to make sure whether I think it would be something I'm interested in. Usually I just add it to my watch list and I keep an eye out for it. And this was uh, this was crazy to me because until about maybe six months ago, I had never heard of it. And it turns out the book's got like 125,000 ratings and like a 4.25. It's an extremely popular book and series. And I was walking around without having any idea what it was so this seems like a, a a more of a like a horror uh fantasy novel where um like demons it's called the demon cycle the series is and they demons who are um essentially uh running the world in the sense of like killing people um uh, and and we follow three characters who try to stand up to them um, so, uh, in terms of the kind of horror aspect, I'm very much into that. The thing I enjoy about this is that it's got the warded man, and then it's got author of the Desert Spear at the bottom, but the Desert Spear is the second book in this series. And I just like the idea that someone was going to look at this book and be like, hey, I read that one. It's never going to happen. Uh, odd choice. So, uh, after the warded man... I got Lord Fowl's Bane as well by Stephen R. Donaldson, which is the first book in the Chronicle of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever. I found the whole trilogy at one point at a charity shop in England and I bought it, but I never read the series and it was, um, I, I, I don't know what, it was such a big copy that it kind of just always put me off. Uh, whereas now that I'm in Canada, I love finding these editions, like the same as these ones where it's just like, a slightly, I know this one's like 
10 years ago maybe but this one's like the 80s 70s and i just like finding these mass market paperback old looking cheeky boys ones that are never going to be put on display here because grace would hate it but downstairs oh they can hide in the darkness loitering once again a series that probably going on two years ago now people recommended me and so the information i was aware of has floated away into the ether um and honestly there's not much of a description on the back of this book to me i've heard people describe uh donaldson as a kind of um that 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 in the in the realm of a tolkien kind of uh like descendant but someone who was beginning to um subvert and shift and that interests me it, it, it's the same way as reading uh like michael moorcock i want to i've been wanting to read more 70s 80s 90s that kind of era um because i think it's a big gap i think i've read older and i think i've read a lot of new stuff but um you know it'll be nice to i'm covered in cat hair that's crazy so that's all the um the the fantasy i bought i bought two fantasy books so if you wanted to see more fantasy get lost and i don't know when i'll read these but i've been they've been on my watch list people have recommended me them and i want to do a better job of actually reading the books that people recommend me when i ask so next up i have been on what can only be described as a classic binge at the moment like i read stoner chekhov uh, i've been i've been reading a lot of classics recently honestly i've been buying a lot of classic here i've got four one is kind of a quasi it seems a bit lewd to call it a classic so to begin with i got siddhartha by herman hesse which i've been wanting to read for a long time it's where um the titular character uh leaves his home and essentially goes on a kind of self-discovery uh, journey where he he kind of um, sheds himself of everything to find uh, the the true meaning as it were I mean this is like a, a quintessential novel I, I've been wanting to read it for a long time like I said it, it's one of those that it just feels like I already should have read it so I'm very interested to hear people's thoughts on it because whilst it's an extremely famous book of course I don't think I've seen really anyone talk about it um, on booktube from my experience and so i'd be interested to hear thoughts um i got steinbeck's the grapes of wrath because i i want to read more steinbeck i know i'm going to read more steinbeck i bought cannery row recently we've already got east of Eden down there now i've got grapes of wrath so I, I i'm really stocking up for when that eventually hits i also got between the acts by virginia wolf uh which it was oh some plastic just came off the book. What the fuck? Um, so it, it has some doodles on the back, which is always nice. But it does have a little stamp, the Cloner Bookshop, which is very cute. And I do love the Penguin book designs. My uh, A Room of One's Own, which is an old family copy, is the same one. So I, I also like having these shared motifs throughout the design and everything. I, I like having different copies but some the same. So it kind of creates like a, a shared mess. <laughs> and Between the Acts is one of the later novels from, uh, if anything, it could be the latest, I don't remember. Yeah, it is one of her latest ones. Before I um, do that, the, the book has a note written in it, which is for um, Pyle's Ointment. I don't, I don't know what to do with that information. Evidently, at some point, someone who owned this book needed piles ointment. So, that's wonderful. And finally, the Bhagavad Gita. I've been wanting to read this Sanskrit literature for a long time. And... It actually fits with something that I've been wanting to do, which is to kind of uh, read semi, like quasi, linearly through time. So, like, ancient Egypt, then like Gilgamesh, Sanskrit, etc. And, and like, like into ancient Greece and that kind of thing. Kind of um, 
provide a linear path chronologically, which of course doesn't make sense because things happen at different times in different places. But it's just one way that I think is a way to quantify moving forward. Um, so that is something I want to do. And so that, that's going to be perfect for that. Uh, like I, I found a copy of the um, uh, Gilgamesh the other week. And yeah, so it's nice to pick these up secondhand. I don't like buying books new really unless they're like, usually it's book of books or like fantasy releases. They're the only things I get new really. Um, so we have one random memoir, which is I got an Annie Erno, A Frozen Woman, because anytime I find an Annie Erno, especially secondhand, you can't resist it. it it's such a, a good find, like it's such a good find. Uh, I, I, it's the Seven Stories Press because in the UK, Fitzcarraldo they publish Aniano and uh, in North America, it's Seven Stories Press. So Happening and A Frozen Woman, now I have a nose. The other side of Fitzcarraldo, I don't mind the difference. Um, I think they're both nice looking copies. So that's that. Then I have four, I have four poetry collections. When I went, I meant I was meant to take a an uh, Emily Dickinson poetry collection that I've had for well, Grace picked it up for me, and I, I meant to read it. I meant to take it with me, and alas, I didn't. I completely forgot. And so while I was out there, I was like, okay, I'll get some poetry because then I can read it while I'm out there. And so what I've done is I bought four. I don't know how it happened. So, to do it in order of how I bought them, it goes like that. So the first thing I bought was Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Uh, this is the, like, edition that he published just before he died, uh, like a couple of months beforehand, because he was constantly updating and changing it throughout his life. And so this is what kind of, like, a definitive, I think there's a word for it, I think they, there's, like, a deathbed edition, that's it which is such a morbidly fantastic way to describe it. And it's a long poetry collection. I've, I've done an essay on Walt Whitman. I, I <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy that despite writing an essay on him, um, I had not read more than a handful of his poems. So that's definitely on the agenda at some point. I then got Time is a Mother by Ocean Vuong because I already had read it. I got an arc for it when it came out in 2022, but um, I never bought it physically because poetry collections are extremely expensive, especially in hardback. But we went to Mosaic Books, which is one of the ones in Kelowna, and they had it heavily discounted. Like it was the same value as the secondhand books I was buying. So there was really no argument against picking up a, a brand new, hardback of a poetry collection I know I like and I reread this on the trip as well and I still thoroughly enjoyed it I gave it a four star this time um so still a banger the one I'm currently making my way through is that I found a secondhand copy of Alexander Pushkin's uh poetry Pushkin's been someone that I've wanted to read for a while um you know like father of Russian literature and poetry uh self-acclaimed in terms of like even this book refers to him as that. He, he like It was a kind of title bestowed upon him. What I can say so far is uh, I, I really love, I really love the poetry so far in this. I, I, I've read his lyric, uh, like lyrical poems. And after reading Ocean Vong, there is something nice and also extremely, uh, unbelievably brilliant about not only the poetry itself, the imagery, the, the feeling it, it, it brings out in you, but also the fact that it was, it's translated. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 translation is impressive no matter what. It always is. But translation of poetry, where you have to take the meanings of the words and the phrases, etc., but also translate them in a sense of still rhyming, and containing the meaning of which it originally had is it, it just sounds like an impossible task to me and and it must take so much time and care uh to be able to do that 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 
I'm loving this so far. And yeah, with the realism, you get wonderful descriptions of the weather, landscapes, and also an interesting description of like, there's one where it's about um, like, you're essentially following the perspective of like a poison that's put on an arrow and, and like experiencing the journey to find its target, etc. And like things like that, where it's it's just really fascinating ideas. The cat is right by the camera. She is not meant to be on that bookcase, so you want to get down. And finally, what I got was Fierce Fairy Tales, Poems and Stories to Stir Your Soul by Nikita Gill. Now, I had read a little bit of Wild Embers, her other um, poetry collection. Uh, I got it out of the university library, but I didn't know this existed. And I think this would be much more up my alley. I didn't have time to finish uh, Wild Embers because I was doing my like, dissertation and stuff. But yeah, retellings of classic fairy tales, etc., uh, with with Nikita Gill's uh, like poetry skills, I I just think this is going to be a banger. So yeah, we got that from a really cute little. Um, it was a it was a children's bookstore. But it also had like some adult books mixed in and like that one where it's kind of like a quasi bow for it's like a retelling that is for adults but of um yeah you get what I mean. And then finally what we get to are the big boys. The two of these they, they are the what is the cat doing? I'm so tired. I we got off the flight today. We flew overnight, so I've slept about like th th three hours so far so i'm very tired but and the cat's just doing her own thing so it's just freaking me out she's tipped the bag over and she's inside of it the the last grouping two of the books i got are booker books um like so brand new they are the things i splurged on i spent money on them because there were ones such as wandering stars or the new um Richard Powers book which interested me but I have other books by those authors Tommy Orange that that yeah by authors such as like Tommy Orange that I do want to read but I, I have books by them that I need to read first uh, to justify buying a hardback of an author I haven't read so instead what we have here out of reading the long list the descriptions and everything these were the two I was most interested in one I'm currently reading I'm coming up to halfway and I'm thoroughly enjoying it is My Friends by uh, Hisham Matar. This follows the story of Khalid, who is a, 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 um, a Libyan child, a uh, young adult. Essentially, we're, we're following someone who is uh, experiencing the memory of his life. So we begin at the, the kind of latter stages of his life in terms of the chronology of this book, and um, yeah, it, it describes his experience of uh, being a young man moving to England, uh, to to, well, no, to Edinburgh from um, from Libya. His experience with his family, his experience at the university, and his experience with the government. And essentially, it follows the kind of feeling of um, because it's under Gaddafi rule, it's that that uh, sense of. Um, surveillance being watched being spied on uh worrying that your calls are being tapped that the people that are your friends are actually going to dob on you being able to travel abroad and speak out about your experience but only being able to do that under anonymity still because there is that quasi level of what can you do? like if they find out you're going to be excommunicated from you're going to be exiled and Essentially, we follow Khalid, who is someone who, when he moves to England, an event happens that means that his life kind of falls into limbo. And so it's a very passive character. Things happen to him. But I, I love his... I love the voice of Khalid. I love the people that he's spending time with, the, the relationships he's forming. Um, I, I love how... Reading this, I, I feel like I'm learning, I, I am learning as I read, which is exactly what you want, as, like from any book, but also a book book in particular, is that, uh, like, I, I'm learning what it would have felt like 
to live under a regime like that and it's not like outrageous things are happening i'm reading it and i'm like well this is based on true history it, it is historical fiction in the sense of uh the, a fictionalized character within the, the real world events and so yeah there's just a level of accuracy that i feel while reading this that i'm really appreciating so far um so yeah my friend has been a real big success and the other one is the safe keep this is a, a dutch novel where uh it follows um i think it's like in the 60s yeah in the 60s it, uh, you're, you're following a character who lives in uh, kind of like a rural area she's a very prim and proper tidy person and then her brother's girlfriend comes to stay and she's the kind of antithesis she's she's like messy late uh like sleeps in etc all these kind of things uh it's about their kind of jarring their clashing but also about how they kind of come together and i believe it's also uh, it gives way to infatuation so she kind of these two she kind of falls in love with this woman who is completely opposite to her and is also her brother's partner so uh, that one just sounded like it was going to be weird and interesting um so they were the two out of the book along list that i was interested in I'm going to hopefully, I'm at least going to read My Friends because I'm already reading it. But I was hoping to also read The Safe Keep before the shortlist gets announced. But I don't know how possible that's going to be. And the final book, which was recommended in the Discord, is Under the Skin by Michael Faber. Once again, I added this book about two years ago. And I have never seen it in a bookstore. Like, I haven't seen it new. I haven't seen it pre-owned. I have been into countless, countless, countless bookstores and never seen under the skin so we went into a random um it was oh where was it it's just a random bookstore i also got between the acts from there as well and it was it was uh it was just sat there lovingly it was a really annoying store because like it was long bookcases like the entire wall was a bookcase but rather than doing like alphabetical as you go down they did it like all across like a to e then f to bloody like whatever and it was like you had to read across it and so it just became such a messy thing of trying to make sure you were where you were before and didn't get mixed up hated it but i found under the skin which to remind myself because i genuinely don't remember what it's about says that uh, this novel introduces Isley, a mysterious female who drives across the scottish highlands picking up well-muscled hitchhikers Scarely, scarcely big enough to peer over her steering wheel, scared, uh, scarred and vulnerable, yet strangely erotic and threatening. Isley makes the hitchhikers open up to her and reveal clues about who might miss them if they should disappear. At once humane and horrifying, Under the Skin is a heart-thumping ride through the dangerous territory where moral instincts and the boundaries of compassion collide. Very interesting. And uh, as you can maybe tell, is that um, that is Scarlett Johansson on the cover because they adapted it, which I know is meant to be a very good adaptation in the sense of it's a good film, not necessarily it's a good translation of the novel. So that's it. They're all the books I got. Please let me know if you've read any of these or are interested in reading any of them. And yeah, I had a great time with Grace. Thoroughly loved it. Got really interesting books that I don't think they're books that I've wanted for a long, long time. I was surprised by how many things I was finding where I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I've wanted. Like all of these things. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Please do like, please do subscribe. As always, have a nice rest of your day.